As you will recall, Sam said this. Trust me on this, it gets better. <laughs> poor, poor Kevin Tran. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for episode seven of Supernatural season eight, A Little Slice of Kevin. This is the episode where we find out a little bit more about the overall aspect of the Demon Tablet and that there are others. We also get the return of Castiel and we get a little bit of intrigue into what's going to happen with the latter half of the season. Oh, and they just casually drop that Chuck is dead. Dared. This episode has a few things going for it. It also has a few things going against it. The beginning half is kind of dull to be honest there is this slight intrigue of castiel kind of appearing and then disappearing but it all turns out to eventually be him just appearing halfway through the episode so these ghost manifestations were kind of just filler like he says that oh i'm kind of been like lost and whatnot i was like yeah okay i, I kind of get it but it's like a little weird and then also kevin tran's mom like i like her in some episodes i don't like her at the beginning of this one the whole thing with the witch thing is just so dumb, but it does give off that demon bomb thing that Sam uses later, but it, it just seems such an inconsequential action just for the story to progress. The first half of this episode, I'll say, is kind of crap. We also do get the conclusion of Dean's story in Purgatory and where he believes he kind of accidentally left Castiel behind because he couldn't hold onto his arm long enough, aside from Castiel actually just like being, no, I belong here. Now, I understand that there are times where you will second guess, you will constantly overthink a situation, its conclusion, and wonder what you did and if you did the right action, and I kind of see that Carver was trying to do that with this. I feel like it's drama for drama's sake. Like, not to say that Supernatural wasn't guilty of doing that before this, and they definitely certainly aren't going to shy away from doing it after this, but I just thought that was a little there for the sake of being there like i feel that the monsters and everything they had to do uh, in purgatory were already enough trauma but you know it's the winchesters they can't get enough trauma but we've got a sideline that because it's kevin who's getting all the trauma he gets kidnapped by crowley he sees other prophets get ripped apart he gets his own finger chopped off and we get a little bit of prelude in terms of closing the gates of hell and the idea that there are other tablets for some reason. Also, Metatron's name is dropped. Forgot he was dropped this early. But then he's going to appear later on in the season, so there's a cool little drop there. Again, a little bit of the sprinkles. Carver is definitely taking a much more basic storyline in comparison to what has been done in the last two seasons, but it's consistent. It's progressing. It's not also all being done in three episodes. And I do find it kind of funny how they just casually drop that, oh yeah, Chuck. I guess he's dead. Carver maybe having that idea very early on of what he was gonna do, maybe just be like, hey, you know what, I can use this later on in terms of how long this show goes. Cause I gotta remind you guys, as I've done before, they didn't know if the show was gonna keep going. They always had the idea that the season they were working on was the last one, especially with how this one is. Like the numbers after season seven were dismal. So they probably thought eight was gonna be the end of it. They're able to save Kevin. Castiel is suddenly taken up by Naomi, who is played by Amanda Tapping. This is her first appearance and she doesn't get a conclusion, unfortunately, <laughs> in the show's grandiose arc. She's starting to lay down the path of Castiel being the inside sleuth and even possible betrayal of the brothers. I do know this leads me to the moment that I actually had faith again in Supernatural. I know that episode's coming. I know that one's coming for me. So I'm excited for that one. Overall, it's hard to kind of gauge this episode. I really don't like the first half and the second half is better but I don't feel it pulls itself out of the mediocrity that it is. It's what's gonna come though that is going to be good. But that doesn't mean that the episode itself, its core aspects are good. So in the end, I'm gonna give a little slice of Kevin a three out of seven. The first half really sucked and it really dragged it down for me. 
I almost thought about giving it a four, but I was like, nah, I, I can't stand it how this episode starts. It's so boring, it's so stupid, it's so trivial. The latter half does pull it out of complete mediocrity. But those are my thoughts about this episode. Let's see what you guys have to say. Little Slice of Kevin shows Crowley is a big bad for the show. I love the concept that there is a profit for every generation replaced if Kevin dies. Kevin's mom hiring a backstabbing witch is hilariously accurate. I, I, I know, but it just felt so stupid when in the part. Plus, Castiel returning is a great plus. I love that his growth wanting to do penance for everything that happened in Season 7. Him being on a leash from Heaven also adds an interesting dimension to the show. Really looking forward to expressing my thoughts in the next episode where the boys and cast fight an insect rabbit hybrid. But for now, that's all, folks. I like this episode because it was pushing the story forward. I was happy to finally see Castiel back. The part of the episode I had a hard time believing was Linda would be able to get a demon into the trunk of her car by herself. It's kind of back and forth on <clears> the <throat> um, Miss Tran. I liked her a little bit in some parts, and then some parts of this episode I absolutely despise her. <laughs> to quote a famous Star Wars character, this is where the fun begins. Watching Crowley torture is always enjoyable. It just reminds me of how fantastic Crowley was from, from earlier seasons. Although, poor Alfie. Yeah, he, he definitely does get, gets the, uh, the shitty end of the screw. I don't know who that actor is, but damn, he gave it his all. From looking like he was in immense pain to drooling. Although this episode was retconned later in season 11 since Donatello was not among these prophets, so this is where the season finally picks up. Not the best, but it was also a great filler episode. That's what I was wondering. I had a feeling there was something going on with Donatello. I was like, hey, where is he? Isn't he the next person in line? But like we said, poor, poor Kevin Tran never gets a break throughout this entire season, or this entire show, truly speaking. What's not to like about this episode? Ah, I had a few. Cass is out of purgatory, Crowley acts like the king of hell, the return of Mr. Tran, Cass is back, and I love how the mystery of how he got out is teased throughout this episode. The scene where Cass changing back to a holy accountant look uh, is one of the classic Cass and Dean moments. Crowley is in big bad mode and it's great to watch him be an adversary for Sam Dean and Cass. Love the face off between him and Cass. And then there's Miss Tran. I love her brand of non-trained hunter skills. I mean, she means so well and does it so wrong by hiring a witch. That's a good way to put it as well in a, in a more positive spin than me. Lastly, gotta love Naomi's debut, played by the ama amazing Amanda Tapping. Just like Crowley, I prefer this version of Naomi where she just stood in opposition to the boys. But then, remember, she just disappears and the show ended. I was really curious what they were going to do with that whole heaven is shutting down business, but then they just never finished that storyline. It was an interesting detail that Dean misremembered the flashback in Purgatory and tied it to his own survivor's guilt. I don't know. I felt like that was like a, a kind of a lazy cop-out. This is the only time where his memory of an event was shown to be inaccurate and false to what actually happened, and I think that says a lot about Dean where his head is at. Yeah! I, like I said, I just... I, I felt it was just kind of a MacGuffin. It just felt like it was there for the sake of dragging out the Purgatory, getting out of Purgatory plotline, and I, I feel like there could have been a better explanation than just, yeah, I just didn't remember it per correctly. I think you'll enjoy this episode. <laughs> it's one where Crowley was allowed to shine. I will agree on that. This is, there is no more Purgatory flashbacks after this. I kind of like the storyline element. I thought it was okay. I would have liked to have seen more of it, truly speaking. Um, but I think you got enough of what you wanted. And the Leviathan thing at the end, like, I guess it's there. But then again, like, how does Cass get away? I, it just didn't make any like there's a lot that still could have happened i feel but the reason why dean is in his guilt is just to drag out the drama i feel it's not really justified if they had just added something like his brain got scrambled going through the portal and having um having Benny in his arm, I feel like that would have been a better justification, but because nothing is ever said, that's what kind of nicks me about that whole just not remembering what happened. Crowley was truly in his element here. I missed how good his character was before Dab ruined him, just like Dean. I knew instantly that something was up with when Castiel was out of Purgatory, even though Castiel wasn't at full strength. He managed to hold his own against Crowley, I love their standoff. He totally played Crowley. I wasn't surprised Castiel refused to leave Purgatory because of the horrible things he did on Heaven and Earth. And he gets uh, sets Dean straight. He's right. He can't save everyone, but as usual, Dean always blames himself. 
I did like that aspect. I felt like that Cassio wanting to stay was justified. Also, in terms of all these comments about Crowley, very thankful that Mark Shepard survived his absolute insane round of heart attacks. Very glad that the man is all right. All right, guys. Thank you for that. We got episode eight. Hero, I can't even say that, but give me your guys' thoughts about that episode in the comments and I'll read those off in the next review. Until then, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, we'll see you for number eight.